Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about pap tests, otherwise known as cervical screenings or pap smears. A pap test is a simple procedure that looks for the presence of abnormal cells in the cervix. It's used to screen for and diagnose precancerous conditions of the cervix and vagina, and it's also used to monitor any conditions that might have been found on your previous pap test. For example, if you have a positive pap test and there has been abnormal cells found, you're probably going to go in and have more routine pap testing done just to see if those abnormal cells have cleared up. A pap test can also be used to test for HPV. So when you get a pap test done, you can also ask for an HPV test at the same time, and the doctor or nurse can actually take two separate samples. So one, they will test for abnormal cells of the cervix, and the other sample they'll use to test for HPV. This isn't a routine thing that they do, you do have to ask for it, but if you do have any abnormal results that come up on a pap test, you'll probably get called in to do another pap test where they might actually take a sample to screen for HPV to see if that's what's causing the cell changes to happen. In Canada, which is where I live, pap tests are done starting around the age of 25 and are done up until the age of 69. They're usually done every three years. Um, it kind of just depends on how often you go in to get a pap test done on your health history. If you've had a positive pap test or have had like any abnormal cell changes come up on previous pap tests, you'll probably have to go in in more often than every three years. Now I can't speak for what the guidelines are in different countries because I live in Canada, but it's always good to just look at the guidelines of where you live to see if you are getting tested regularly enough because regular testing is super, super important. And that is why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to talk about pap tests because I know that they can be kind of uncomfortable. They're one of those tests that a lot of people ignore or just simply don't do very often. And unfortunately, when it comes to cervical changes like precancerous conditions, you can't feel that happening. So you might have abnormal changes going on in your cervix, but you won't know unless you get a pap test done. And that's why pap testing is so important and that's why it's important to get it done routinely. Because if you have abnormal cells or precancerous condition and you catch it early, then you can monitor it and it should not progress to a cancerous condition because you're having it monitored. And that's why pap tests save lives. Now, most of you watching this probably have had a pap test done before, but if you haven't, let me tell you how it's done so you will feel more prepared when you get it done. So to get a pap test, done, you can call your doctor, so your regular family doctor, or you can go to a sexual health clinic that can do pap testing for you. Kind of just depends on what you feel the most comfortable with. Once you make your appointment and you show up for your appointment, they will most likely talk you through the procedure and they will ask you to undress from the waist down and give you a robe to cover yourself. Once the doctor and nurse leaves, then you can cover yourself with the robe, undress, you know, get prepared, take a few deep breaths, and then the doctor and nurse will come in and ask if you're okay, and they'll probably ask you to lay on the medical bed inside the room. And so some medical beds have stirrups and so you would put your feet in the stirrups and that just allows the doctor or nurse to have a better look at everything down there. Or they might not have stirrups on the bed and so they might ask you to put your feet in certain positions that makes it a little bit easier for them to access your vulva and vagina area. From there, the doctor or nurse will take a speculum and this is what speculums look like. So they're either plastic or metal. And what a speculum does is it's inserted into the vagina and it helps open the walls of the vagina so the doctor or nurse can see your cervix more clearly. Now speculums do come in different sizes. So if you feel that the speculum the doctor or nurse is using is too big, then you could actually ask them like, do you have a different size? Some doctors will actually let you insert the speculum yourself so you feel more comfortable. That's not everyone, but that might be an option for for you so you can always say like hey can I insert that myself because <laughs> that would be a lot more comfortable and then once the speculum is inserted into the vagina and it's opened a little bit so the walls of the vagina are open and the doctor or nurse can look at the cervix they'll do a little bit of a visual examination see if there's anything that looks off and then they will take a swab or a very soft brush and they will gently place that through the speculum and they will gently collect cells from your cervix they will then take the swab out they might put the swab in solution they might wipe it on a glass slide and then the speculum will be taken out 
and the procedure is done. It only takes a few minutes. And then once your doctor has the sample on either a slide or in solution, they will take that sample and they will send it to the lab. And that lab will do some testing and they'll look to see if there's any abnormal cells present in your sample. Now at this point, if you've had a swab done for HPV, the lab will also be looking for HPV on that sample. After the procedure is done, then your doctor will explain when the results will come in, all that kind of stuff. You might experience some light spotting. That's not super typical, but it can happen. So it's just good to know. But usually these procedures are like super gentle. They might be like slightly uncomfortable, but they're done and over with in just a few minutes. And then you'll just wait on your results. And so when your results come back, they will either be negative or positive. So a negative results mean that there were no abnormal cells found. Everything's good. A positive result means that there were abnormal cells found in your sample. Now I want to make it really clear that this does not automatically mean you have cancer. There are a lot of reasons why you might have abnormal cell changes in your cervix. Inflammation is one of them. There's also different viral and bacterial infections, HPV being the most common one, as well as other conditions. So about 80% of people will experience an HPV infection in their life. But the good news is that in most cases, HPV does clear on its own and it can take up to two years for it to clear. But once it's cleared, it's all good. Like everything's fine down there. It doesn't often progress to precancerous or like a cancerous condition. However, there are certain strains of HPV that can cause cervical cancer. So if you don't get routine pap testing done to see if you have any abnormal cell changes and have them monitored, you are putting yourself at risk. Potentially you could have changes down there and you might not know it. So that's why routine pap testing is so awesome is because you can catch these things before they progress to anything more serious. Now, if you do have a positive pap test that does have abnormal changes on it, your doctor might describe it as low grade changes or high grade changes. And this is just based on how abnormal the cells looked in your sample. So low grade changes are often caused by HPV. And like I said, they usually clear up on their own. However, it is important to monitor them. So your doctor will probably ask you to come back for more routine pap testing. You might have to go every six months to a year. It kind of just depends until the HPV has cleared. If you have a high grade cell change, that means that it's a precancerous condition or possibly a cancerous condition. And any high grade cell changes would most likely need more diagnostic testing to see what's going on. So your doctor can figure out what the best course of action is in terms of treatment and that kind of thing. And your doctor will talk to you about a bunch of different treatment options. I'm not going to get into that in this video because I don't want you to worry about that right now. I just want you to know that regular pap testing is super, super important, especially because if you do have any abnormal cell changes, it's so important to monitor them. Precancerous conditions can potentially lead to cancerous conditions if they're not monitored and treated properly. And that's why it's so vital <laughs> that you get regular pap testing done. Even though you might think like, I'll just move it to next year or like, I don't need to worry about that. It is part of what keeps you healthy. Just think of it like that. Instead of thinking about it as like this invasive procedure, think about it as something that will help you have a better peace of mind when it comes to your cervical and like vaginal health. So I hope you learned a lot in this video. I really, really, really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. As always, your cycle matters so much and I'm here for you and I'll see you in the next video.